Let's talk a little bit about um, the culture of, of, of Slack, where obviously in Silicon Valley there's a, a large emphasis on you know, diversity and, um, and empathy and, and transparency and authenticity and all of those things, which are all buzzwords that are easy to say but, but hard to practice. Um, so talk a little bit about your, your thoughts on that. I would be happy to. So actually, here's another factor that I think helped in the, the success was that by the time we started to work on Slack, that was, uh, again, too early 2013, all of the four co-founders had worked together for at least 10 years. And um, at this point, um, one of the co-founders I have now worked with for 18 years. Um, so there's a very, very high degree of trust and understanding of people's capabilities and knowing how to work with these people that um, that was the, the core of the team. and. In addition, we had been through this traumatic experience. So there's eight people who made the transition from Glitch to working on Slack. And going through trauma with a group of people is like the best bonding experience you could have. And we had worked with them for several years. So like that, that makes a really big difference. Um, it also instructed the kind of culture that we wanted to have. And we made some really great early hires. Um, and you know, a lot of those decisions in the early days that you could, you don't have enough information to make the decision properly. And it could be this, and it could be this. And so, after some consideration, and by the way, John Dora once gave me some, I think is really good advice. If a decision is really, really hard to make, then it probably doesn't matter. Because um, if it's that close, it doesn't matter. And, and sometimes you're right, sometimes you're wrong. We were right many times, and we got a couple of great hires. Um, our chief of staff for engineering is a guy named Nolan Cottle, who wrote this great piece that when we were about 30 employees about building the kind of workplace that we would want to have and identifying at that time three traits that we would look for in people. And one of them was empathy. Um, and that was something that was at the core of the company in the beginning. Just from my perspective, um, it's very difficult to design something well if you don't have any empathy for the people who are using it. And in fact, empathy is probably the most important skill that a designer can have. Because if you can't step back from your own emotions and your own ego about how the thing should be in your idea versus somebody else on the team's idea, um, and really put yourself in the shoes of a human being who's going to be using the software, then it's, uh, I don't know, your, your chances of success are coin flips. Um, another one was curiosity, and another one was diligence. And those have morphed over the years. And we actually, on our day two of onboarding for new employees, it's the CEO welcome. And I start by telling them, um, we had a management offsite to discuss corporate values and then wait for the, <laughs> <laughs> wait for the groan. Um, and what came out of that was um, empathy as expressed by courtesy, expressed through courtesy. Um, and you can be courteous without being empathic. A lot of psychopaths are super skilled at being great with people and not having any empathy. Um, Craftsmanship tempered by playfulness. And playfulness, in a sense, doesn't just mean silliness or whimsy, although I think we got away with just enough of that in the brand to, to be accessible to people and, and authentic. Um, but playfulness, in that sense, means willingness to improvise and um, be creative and to uh, try to anticipate what other people are doing. If any of you have ever played team sports or um, played improvisational music, you'll know that uh, attempts that you make to both act in a way that's going to be helpful to your teammates or your fellow musicians um, while simultaneously anticipating what they're going to do and paying attention to what they're doing now. And that's a, um, the kind of playfulness that we mean. And then the last one was, um, and this, this comes straight from the philosophy degree, is thriving, which is really because when we said flourishing, everyone thought we meant like this. Um, Aristotle's eudaimonian ethics discuss this kind of happiness that one gets from fulfilling their purpose, irrespective of what the purpose is. So doing the thing that you're meant to do, in the sense that like a knife is meant to cut things, and so a good knife is a sharp knife. I, he does get into a little bit what he, Aristotle thinks that people should do, but that's irrelevant. There is um, a feeling that you get when you're really engaged in something. You know, sometimes people talk about the flow state. Um, and when you're doing the thing that you're, you're meant to be doing, that's incredibly valuable. So the last set of values, thriving both in ourselves and in others. So the last one is solidarity. And that's very strange for, for like a, as a list of values for a high-tech company because um, most lists of values are like excellence, 
integrity. <laughs> I don't know what else would be on that list. But they're completely generic, and people forget them the day after they have their new employee welcome.